Fixing digital noise in our photos with high ISO images is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. All right, so um, while organizing my photos over the weekend, I came across a set of images, and we'll talk about that a little bit more into the show, um, on this random child I photographed on an airplane. We were stuck on the tarmac, and to entertain him, I did a little mini photo shoot of him. So, of course, with his parents' permission, here's what we came up with. Now, back then I was shooting with a Nikon D700, phenomenal sports camera, not the greatest on high ISO. So this was shot at 6400 ISO. So let's show the before and after. Now before I do that, let me get over here. And I'm going to click on edit. And this is where I can undo any of the uh, tools that we've added. All right, one moment. Let me get rid of the zoom screen. There we go. All right, so develop AI or develop raw is the first tool that's always added no matter what. Now, the difference, if you notice, I did do denoise up here, but I also started with denoise down here. All right, so I started with the, the adding the denoise feature at the raw level, and then I increased it more up here. So let me go through all this. Let me discard the edits and show you what we're starting with. All right, so here we are with the original image. It's underexposed, but worse than being underexposed, look at the noise. Let me zoom in right about here. Look at that digital noise we have to uh, deal with. So I'm gonna start with Develop Raw, and I'm gonna pick my camera profile, which will be uh, camera portrait. Good. Now I'm noticing something here. Let me come over here and revert to original. There we go. Yeah, I see it wasn't erasing it. Now it did it. All right, so back to the digital noise. All right, here we are. All right, so again, let's grab my profile this camera it made a slight change nothing major uh, highlights I want to tone down just a little bit now I'm gonna it's okay for it to be underexposed we'll handle that in a moment but what I do need to do is zoom in a little bit more let's look at the noise at a higher level at around 200 percent 280 percent let's come down here to noise and I need to be extremely generous with the luminosity noise. And boost is going to amplify it. There we go. Notice it's doing a good job. And color, just get rid of some of the color noise in the color areas. I'm going to boost it up just a little bit. And get a little more. All right. So we're good with that. Now, when I lock it in place, notice it's shifted to develop, not develop raw, because there can only be one develop raw, and that's at the very base of the edits. Now, right from here, this is where uh, Accent AI comes into play. I'm going to let this do a lot of the development for me. Here we go. Good. Now, the image is slowly developing the way I want it. So I like that, but you know what? I need to add a little more light to his face. So let's come over here to face, AI, and we're gonna relight his face. Give it a second. Once it rend renders it a little bit more, right about here. Good, and it hasn't rendered it yet. There it goes. 
And now look how it nicely relit the face. All right, now here's an issue. Because we have such a great digital noise, if I come over here to eyes and we do our traditional eye enhancer, let's see what it does. Typically, it's gonna add a lot of noise to the eyes which it did a little bit. So no, notice, look at the noise it added. And the reason why it added the noise is because it's not a very sharp image, first of all. You know, it was handheld in an airplane, but look what it's doing. So we could try to come in here and add, you know, his real colors to his eyes. Let's see if that'll help. It does, but from a distance, it'll look fine, but up close, it looks totally fake. So I'm going to take that eye enhancer and bring it way back. And the visibility of the eye, we just added, bring it down a little bit. Let's add a little iris flare. Now keep in mind, no matter what, when we start manipulating photos like this, it's going to, something's going to look fake. And in this case, that doesn't look good at all. So we're gonna go back to just the original and we'll live with his eyes being the start because it is what it is, all right? So we have that set. Now I'm gonna come up. Let me grab the erase tool. And I do wanna get rid of this one blemish right there. Erase it. Now I don't even need the second run of denoise because this looks good as is so we'll we'll opt out of the denoise so what's the difference between adding denoise at the raw level versus this level and the answer to that is absolutely nothing what the engineers decided to do was put the majority of the uh, elements tools inside develop raw so we don't have to bounce around to the different tools but it does give us the option, let's say, to come back to color, for example. And I want to desaturate the whole scene just a little bit, but bring up the vibrancy a bit. I can do that here instead of having to go back into, into my raw develop. And if the raw develop wasn't strong enough, then I get a second pass. All right. One thing I do want to tone down a bit. Let's go to the luminosity. I'm at I'm in HSL. That yellow bag. I just want to tone it down just a little bit. There we go. And last, let's add a little more vignette to the scene. I'm going to choose the subject. And. Dial it in. But what I'm really concerned with here is I don't mind the edges being dark, but what I really want is that inner light. There we go. Look at that. All right. So lock it in. Now when I click on edit, these were the tools we used. Six of them. So I opted out of running denoise the second time because it looks good the way it is. And let's look at before and after. Here's the original image. And this is what we ended up with. All right. So let's open it up for discussion. You can unmute your mic. Yeah, but Ellie, um, I think the, I don't know, I wasn't there, but it looks as though the uh, the little boy was too near to get a good focus on. Exactly. Uh, so I, I shot this with an 85 millimeter lens. And just a little backstory on this. Um, we were stuck on the tarmac. The mother had an infant. And this little boy was very rambunctious. So um, he saw that I had a camera. <clears throat> and he was interested in the camera. So I, I, I turned to the mother and said, do you want me to entertain him? And in broken English, she just smiled and gave me this big, like, sigh of relief. She says, oh, please, do whatever you want. 
So we did this little photo shoot with him. And you're right, Charles, with an 85 millimeter lens, it was extremely hard to get the focus. So in this case, what we can do, and I did leave out a step, is let's do a little sharpening. So here's details. We can bring out some of the sharpening. And in doing that, we just have to be careful we don't reintroduce the digital noise. So good call on that, uh, Charles. Before, after. Just a little bit makes a big difference. All right, next question. Oh, thank you. All right, Mike, fire away. Well, you just you just touched on, uh, upon what I was going to ask you. Usually, when I'm using denoise, I you use a lot, you lose a lot of the clarity. And I, how much sharpening can you really get away with when you're when you're trying to bring some of that back, especially in in a portrait, you know? Work. Yeah. So so here we are, right here. So here's that digital noise, or I'm sorry, here's the details. Here's before, here's after. It does quite a bit, it does very good. And notice it's not overboard. It's not um, making him look choppy. Mm -hmm. All right. And by the way, watch this right click on an image. And uh, let's see, where are we? Go to images from the same date or the folder in the image. So I had this in an album, just so I could get to it quick enough. And this is where I'd click on this to take it to the album. Before I do that, this image here, when you get to the point to where you did everything you could to the image and the noise is still gonna be there, convert it to black and white. You guys are chatting, there we go. So here's the original image, I'll come up in a second. Actually, you know, I'm impatient. So why don't I come here, edit, I actually come down here and just go revert to the original. Give it a second. Now look at the noise on this image. Let's see if it comes up. Actually, I take that back. This image had less of a noise. Oh, there it is. So I was correct. This image, look, look at the digital noise it had. Not as bad as the first image, but it's still there. So that goes to show you digital noise happens when the image is in shadow. So look, look, look how bright this image is. The noise isn't nearly as bad as the original image I had here. This noise was absolutely horrible. Uh, because the image started off very, very dark, and that's where the digital noise likes to live. All right? Um, was that Holly who gave the big... Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions on this right now? Great. All right, let me do this. I'm going to take you to, real quick, uh, go to... Images on the same date, folder and image. So folder, all right. So, and do me a favor, it's so much easier to just open up your mics and talk. I know Gary at, if you don't have a mic, that's understandable. Uh, why not master face? Yes, you can do that too. <clears throat> that's an option if you want to go back. No problem, Gary. And that's an option if you want to go back. You can go back and, and start being uh, more localized adjustments. So what we did there was a global and we, we did the entire object, the entire image in one pass. And what's great about that is now I could take all of that and apply it to the multiple sets of images here. All right. Um, yes. Are there any other tools that will reintroduce noise? Um, Accent AI sometimes does anything where you're dealing with the exposure. 
anything that brings out a little bit of it, it'll, it'll start to introduce that. All right. Now, notice how he started. So here's the very first image. He was shy, shy, and I won him over. What? Let's see. So the time of this was 1210. And by, so by 1210, 47, to right about here, which was again 1210, 54, to him finally coming. So in one minute, I kind of pulled him out of his shell. And that's when we started to just have fun. Um, I was doing duck lips. He did duck lips. I told him something was behind us. He looked around and realized that I was faking, gave a, a cheesy smile, and then we ended up around here, and that was the last shot. So to win him over, like I said, I just, well, I acted like a kid, so I acted like myself. And, and again, so just imagine being stuck on the tarmac, and here's this little kid next to you, and you're entertaining him with the photography. So... All right. Well, guys, we'll end it at this segment, and then we're going to pick up the Ask Me Anything segment right after this. So thanks so much for joining us, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.